Hello and welcome to Tech with Briley. Let's create a blog website with Wagtail CMS. In VS Code, I'm going to create a new folder. We'll make a directory called Wagtail Blog. Next, we will open that directory in VS Code so that we can start development. You can click File, Open Folder, and browse to the location. We can say we trust the authors because we're going to write the code. Now we are in an empty folder in VS Code. We'll first, we'll open a terminal window. Click the Terminal menu, New Terminal. We need to create a virtual environment. This may vary depending on your operating system. We will type Python minus M to call the VN module, the virtual environment module. And we'll create a virtual environment in the folder VENV. So the first VENV is calling this module. The second one is naming the folder. Now we will see in our project, we have a VENV folder. It includes a Python installation. So all a virtual environment is, is a local folder in your project directory. Next, we need to activate our virtual environment. On Mac and Linux, you'll use the command source and point it to the, v, the venv bin activate command. And you should see a little bit of a prefix here on your terminal to say that the virtual environment has been activated. Next, we will install wagtail with the command pip install wagtail. Once the Wagtail dependencies are installed, you should then be able to start a new site. To start a new Wagtail site, we'll use the command Wagtail start my site, my site. This is similar to the virtual environment command where the first my site is the name of the application and the second my site is actually the directory it'll create it in. Next, we will start a Wagtail site using the command Wagtail start my site. That command will create a new directory in our project with some basic site files. We'll change directory into my site. Now that we're inside of the my site directory in our terminal, we have access to the manage.py command. Manage.py is a multi-tool that does a lot of tasks for us. The first task we wanted to do is create our initial database with the Python manage.py migrate. It'll run several migrations for Wagtail core tables and schemas. Next, we're going to want to create a super user so that we can log into the Wagtail administrative interface. We'll use ManagePy again for this with Python ManagePy create super user. Just fill in the details that it asks for and you can use a temporary password because this is running locally. Now that we've created our super user, we can run the server with Python manage.py run server. Since we have created a super user, we can now access the Wagtail admin interface by going to slash admin. We will see the Wagtail sign in page. Enter your credentials. You can click remember me and sign in. And here we have the Wagtail administrative interface. We didn't have to write any code when we get this automatically. We'll take a look at the home page. If we edit the home page, currently we can only edit the title home. We're going to open the home application, open models.py, and modify the home page model. We will add a new body field of type rich text. Then we need to tell Wagtail to display this content panel with the normal page content panels. We want to be able to edit the body in a field. In order for this change to take effect, we need to make a migration. So we'll use the command python manage py make migrations. That creates a new file in our project migrations folder. In order to apply the migration, we can use Python manage py migrate. Now, if we run the server again with Python manage py run server and refresh the home page, edit screen, we now have a body field. Where we can use slash commands to insert advanced formatting blocks. However, if I publish this page by clicking the arrow and then publish, if I view live, the home page is still the same as before. So we're going to need to make a change to the template. So we'll go to our My Site Home application under Templates and look for our home page template. We will remove the default. We will add a home page template that extends our base HTML, which was automatically generated by Wagtail. It loads the Wagtail core tags so that we can use the rich text modifier down here. And inside of the content block, 
it's going to render the page body as rich text. This base HTML can be found in my site templates base HTML, but it's essentially an HTML template with Django template syntax and some wagtail tags. And if we look down here in the body, we have the wagtail user bar, which we'll see shortly, and a content block. The content block is currently empty, but any template that extends this base HTML and that puts any content within the block content, that content will appear on the page. So now if we refresh, we have hello world, basic template. There's not much other style or formatting or navigation, but we can also see here the wagtail menu bar. When I click that, it allows me to navigate back to the wagtail admin or edit this page directly or add a child page. Now that we've modified the home app, we're going to start a new app called blog. To do that, we're using a Django management command called python manage.py start app blog. We can see a new folder created with the blog files, including models and an empty migrations folder. So this is the standard Django folder structure. We'll need to register our, our blog app with the site. So we do that under my site, settings, base.py. We will scroll down and look for installed apps. And under the installed apps, we can add blog. This way Django will know to look for files in the blog app. Next, we're going to return to the blog app under the models.py. Here, we're going to add the basic blog index page. The blog index page will list blog items that we will add momentarily. It extends the Wagtail page model. It has an introduction text, which is again using a rich text field. And we define the content panels again so that we can edit the rich text intro field. Every time we make changes to models, we need to make migrations and then run the migrations. Since we will be creating and rendering this content, we're going to need to create a template. So we can create a new file underneath of our blog app. I say new file. It needs to be in a particular folder called templates, but then a subfolder of that template directory that shares the name of the application. This is a convention that makes our templates easier to organize. Then we'll create the template as an HTML file, blog index page.html. So we can see under our blog app, we have a templates directory, which is empty except for a blog folder. And inside the blog folder is blog index page.html. Here's our blog index page template. It extends the base HTML. We load the wagtail core tag, add a body class, and here's our block content where we will display the page title in a heading level one. And our intro text using the rich text helper. And we will have several blog posts that will render on this page as well. Those posts will be children of this blog page, means direct descendants. And for each of those posts, we're gonna render the post title in a heading with a link, and it'll automatically generate the URL for us. So this is a wagtail tag, and we're gonna render the post intro. And in this case, maybe the body as well. Now we'll need to go back to our models.py and add the model for the blog page. We're going to take advantage of the wagtail search that is built into the wagtail CMS. So we'll import the wagtail search, and we're gonna create a blog page class The blog page class or model is a bit more complicated. It inherits from the wagtail page, but it has a date field, intro field, and a body, which is the rich text. So we have two text fields. One is a plain character field, and the body can have the more rich text formatting. We want to tell wagtail to allow us to search for the text in the intro and body so that the content is discoverable. We want to render the content panels date, intro, and body in the Wagtail user interface when we're editing. Since we've made changes to our models.py, we want to make migrations and 
run those migrations. Since we were able to link to individual blog pages, as can be seen here with this anchor tag, we're going to need a template for individual blog pages. So we'll go back to our blog app, templates, blog, create a new file. We'll call it blogpage.html. Our blog page HTML extends the base HTML, loads the wagtail tags, adds a body class, and in the block content, we'll display the page title, the date of publication, the intro text, and the page body using the rich text helper. This makes sure that any markup inside of the rich text is properly rendered, such as headings or italics. And we'll have a link here back to the blog by getting the parent URL of the blog page. Let's make sure the server is running now. And in the Wagtail sidebar, we can go to Pages, Home, and click the button to add a child page. Now it'll ask us which type of page we want to create. We'll start by creating a blog index page. We'll just call that blog. And we'll just say, welcome to the blog. We'll come down and publish. And now that the page is published, it's listed here under the home. And we can add a blog article. We can click the more options for blog and add a child page of type blog page. We'll see the blog fields rendered here. And we'll fill in each of the fields with some basic information. Now we can publish the post and view it live. Here we go. We have a basic blog rendering. And we can return to the blog page which also, if we return to the Wagtail admin, we use the Pages Navigator to go to Home, and the blog page, we'll see the first post. Let's go ahead and create another post so that we have two of them, one from, let's say, last month and one from this month. Create a new blog page, add some basic information, and I'm posting this one one month in the past. We'll publish. So now we have two blog posts that were updated a moment ago, but one from a month ago and one from today. Let's create one more blog post in between blog post one and the old blog post in terms of the publication date. Create a new blog page. The post date should be earlier in July and we will publish. Now if we view live and we return to the blog, we'll see that the middle post is at the end and the old post is in the middle. This is because by default, Wagtail is sorting the pages by the last modified time and not the publication date. So to make this behave more like a conventional blog, we're going to need to make a small change to our blog index page model. So we can come back over to models.py and look for our blog index page and add a new method called getContext. Now we will update the get context method in the blog index page to get a reverse chronological list of blog pages. We start by getting the context as a dictionary from the super class. We'll get our list of blog pages by filtering the blog page objects for the ones that are published or have a live status and then ordering those in reverse chronological order by putting a negative sign in front of the date. We then create a blog pages key on the context and associate the blog pages with that. And we return that so it can be rendered into the template. Now that we have the blog pages key, we can go to our blog index page.html and change for post and page get children to for post and blog pages. Now, if we visit our blog page, we have a correctly sorted blog list. Thanks for your time. I hope you're doing well and have a great day.